It was noon on the 6th of October, 1863. About 95 men from the 2nd Kansas Colored Infantry and the 3rd Wisconsin Cavalry, under the command of Lieutenant James B. Pond, were eating their midday meal. They were surprised by the Confederate guerrilla troops led by William Clark Quantrill. In the ensuing battle, the troops fought off the guerrillas with the help of a 12-pound howitzer. Uh, both sides had people fighting for them that fought uh, and who, who felt very strongly about the issue, very personally, and who would fight and would kill you in a, at the drop of a hat. Quantrill's people were that way. Uh, and there, were, there were several other bands just as vicious. The day was not done, though. Quantrill's troops were circling around to attack the fort again when they came upon General James G. Blunt and an escort of troops on their way from Fort Scott, Kansas to Fort Smith, Arkansas. Because of the uniforms worn by the guerrillas, Blunt initially thought they were a welcoming party, which allowed them to get very close. The losses were great. Eighty of Blunt's men were killed, but he escaped injury. Quantrill's band headed toward Fort Gibson, Oklahoma. The men killed in the battle are honored with a monument here at the Baxter Springs Cemetery. Tomorrow in part three of our series, we'll go back to Missouri and back in time to August 1861 for the Battle of Wilson's Creek, considered by many to be the bloodiest battle of the entire Civil War. In Baxter Springs, Kansas, Brian Fay, News Site 12.